Please welcome the stage, Paul Pegler. Hello. Hello. So ever since moving to New York, I have found myself really eager to explore my sexuality. Anyone else? I don't know if that's because in New York, you're able to find an outlet for any curiosity that you could possibly have. And a while back, a couple years ago, I was part of this men's group and we would meet regularly to just kind of cut through the bullshit, talk about our career aspirations, our personal goals, relationships, and obviously sex. And this one guy would always come in with the greatest stories. He'd be like, oh, I was in Costa Rica and I made love to two women on a mountain in the rain. Or, oh, you know that roommate I wasn't supposed to sleep with? Well, yeah, I slept with her and her partner was there watching and then my ex came in and joined us. It was beautiful. And we're like, who are you? What is this? And he was in the world. He has like been to Burning Man and he's going to play parties and he's part of the poly scene and BDSM and Tantra. And what this guy really was, was a representation of all the shit that I had always wanted to do and had never done. I've always had these like kind of secret, private curiosities and had never taken any steps towards doing anything about them. So finally, I was now like one degree away from things happening. And one day he told us about this event that he was participating in called Liquid Love. I'll just give you a second to make up your own version of what that might be. But essentially what Liquid Love is, is a bunch of strangers get together and they get naked and pour oil all over their bodies and roll around and have a frictionless experience. So naturally I was curious, uh, terrified and enticed at the same time. And the, here's the thing, so among my group of friends, I'm kind of known as like an adventurer because I'll go and like do things. And whenever I go back to LA, they're always like, tell us the new story. Like, what have you been up to this time, Paul? And one of my friends actually nicknamed me Daredevil because there was a time where I took a massive amount of mushrooms the same week that I decided to change careers, broke up with my girlfriend and went off Prozac. <laughs> he called it brave. Um, I call it stupid. But regardless, I had a habit of just going for it. So. Naturally, I was piqued by this interest in this event, and I think it was compounded by the fact that a year prior, I had ended a relationship, and we did this really cool thing where you break up and then you stay in each other's lives for a year. Um, do you ever do that? It really helps you heal, it's great. Um, 10 out of 10, recommend. And so I was, it had been a year, but I was still frankly broken. And I, a lot of things ended around that same time. So I had really retreated into myself and really just felt very disconnected and um, was in need of some new intimacy because the intimacy we shared allowed me to tear down a lot of the walls I had. And then when I lost it, I just built them back up, but twice as high and twice as strong. And so I was seeking something, something to get me in my body, something to get me out of my head something to build back my confidence and help me explore my sexuality again. And I heard this event and I was like, it wasn't so much a conscious decision that I wanted to do it, I just knew that I had to. And so I did, I bought a ticket and it was a Wednesday evening in May and I walked up to the Brooklyn Brownstone where this was gonna happen. And I ring the buzzer and I'm waiting there and another guy comes up and I'm just kind of look at him like, you ever done this before? He's like, nope. All right. <laughs> and then we go upstairs, and we're let in, and it's very friendly. Like, hey, oh, here, put your stuff here. And there was a snack table with tea and water and fruit and stuff. And But then the guy that I came up with hugs one of the facilitators. And I was like, oh, of course. Everyone's going to know each other here. I'm not a part of this community. Suddenly I felt like an outsider and all of my social anxiety and my insecurities started bubbling up and I was like, what am I doing? Like, I've made a mistake. Like, okay, maybe I'm a cool like daredevil with my friends, but here I'm a small fish in a big pond and I just got very like self-conscious and I was like, oh my God, I don't have any confidence. And they handed out all these um, 
icebreaker question prompts so we could talk to people and get to know each other. And a woman came up to me and asked me what my prompt was, and I don't to this day remember what it was. I don't know what I said to her. I just remember feeling like a deer in headlights. And I tried to talk, but obviously we were not connecting because at some point she found a reason to walk away. And the truth is, I didn't want to connect with anybody. I just wanted to, like, have the experience. I was putting myself into the fire. I was going to have another story to tell my friends. Let's just get naked and let's do the thing, please. And so finally, uh, we were told to sit in a circle in the room. And the room was a living room, but it had been emptied out. The only thing in there were a bunch of pads on the floor with a tarp covering them, taped to the wall to prevent spillage. <laughs> and we're sitting down. The facilitator starts talking. Here's what you can expect from this experience. He was telling me about the history of liquid love. It goes back to the ancient Greece or whatever. And apparently liquid love can be one of two things. It can be a sexual space or it can expressly not be. And ours was the latter. So we talked about consent and we talked about respect. And he's like, look, bodies are weird, okay? Things might happen. Erections are normal. And if you moan or you laugh or whatever feelings come up, that's totally okay. But we're not going to engage in our sexual impulses. It's like, okay. So we stand up and there's about 30 of us in the room. And he says, okay, look around. These are the people you're sharing this experience with. Take off your pants. <laughs> so we take off our pants. And he's like, look down. These are your legs. They've carried you everywhere you've ever gone. Look to the right. Those are your neighbor's legs. They've carried them on their journey. Look around the room. Take off your shirt. Take off our shirt. Look down. That's your body. That's the only one you're ever going to have. Look to the right. That's their body. Look around the room. Remove your underwear. We do. He says, look down. That's you. That's brought you pleasure. It's brought you pain. It's brought you joy and love, fear, anxiety. Look around the room. And then suddenly, we were just 30 bodies, naked as we came, all shapes, all sizes. And look, I come from theater, so like the nudity part wasn't weird for me. Like, whatever. But as we hold that space, he says, OK, if you need to drink water, if you need to use the restroom, do that now. Otherwise, the rest of you just find space on the floor, lay down, close your eyes. So once everyone's settled, we do that. And he leads us in a little guided meditation. And as he's doing this, these two consent angels. So these, there's going to be two people. If you ever have an issue, you raise your hand. They'll come help you out. These two consent angels started walking around and pouring warm coconut oil on all of our bodies. Rub it in. Feel that experience. So we're doing that. He goes, if you want more stimulus, you move to the center of the room. If you want less, you move toward the wall. Otherwise, begin. And it's around this point that I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, OK, I know I wanted to like challenge myself. And so I bought the ticket, and I followed through. I showed up. And here I am. I'm doing it. But like, what the fuck am I doing? I didn't think this far ahead. I'm like, do I move slow? Do I move fast? Like, do I just roll around? Like, what do I do now? Uh, you know, and like, I'm okay, don't get an erection, but like, it'd be fine if you did. And so I'm like trying to navigate that. And I'm like, all right, well, it's not sexual, so don't inappropriately grope someone. And, but, you know, also go with the flow and try to flow with the energy of the room and have the, you know, everyone's having this like connected cosmic frictionless experience. There's people moaning. There's one woman laughing hysterically. And like, things are just going great for everybody else. But I'm like in a room with a bunch of naked, oily strangers, and I'm still stuck in my head. Like, what the fuck? I came here to get out of my head and into my body, and still I was stuck. 
okay, so I was rolling over, felt some penises, okay. Like at one point my face was definitely between a woman's legs. There were boobs, there were butts, limbs just flowing around. We're all like moving and I'm just like, Ugh. And so I don't know if 40 minutes passed or two hours. I don't really know. But eventually it ended. And he said, okay, take your time. Come back into the space. So a few people got up right away. And then eventually I heard some conversation by the snack table. And I'm just laying there with my eyes closed. More in my body, but still in my head. And so, you know, I decide to get up and there's oil everywhere. So I'm like trying to open my eyes. And there's a few remaining glistening bodies on the mat, and some of which I would have loved to engage with had it been a sexual space. And then I'm like, wait, why wasn't this a sexual space? You're telling me that a bunch of strangers are going to come reserve a seat and get naked with a bunch of oily strangers, and it's not going to be sexual? And then I was like, okay, well, wait, maybe, all right, it's like dipping your toe rather than diving in. And would I have even come if it had been a sexual space? And had I come knowing it was a sexual space, would I have even participated or would I have been too stuck in my head to do anything about it? And now I was getting mad and the whole thing started feeling phony and I was just like, I'm done. So I stood up, I grabbed a strawberry, toweled off. Everyone's naked, just chatting, like it's fine, like da, 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 normal. And so I get dressed and I leave. Walk out into the night. And as I'm walking back to my bike, I'm really left with, why did I just do that? What did I get from that experience? And the truth is, the real profound moment happened before our clothes even came off. Because during the conversation about consent, we did this exercise in which you partnered up. And one person lays on the floor, and their partner provokes them, provokes them, what? provokes them, <laughs> provocative, you know what I mean, into finding their boundaries. And the goal is to find your no. So you poke, you squeeze, you slap, you tickle, you itch, you massage, whatever it is. And the goal is not to hurt them or make them uncomfortable, it's to push them so that they react, so that they find their edge, so they know where it is. And so I'm partnered with a woman, she lays down, and I'm I feel like a child. I'm like gently like stroking one finger on her leg and like pushing into her. I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't belong here. I'm a noob. And she's clearly a pro because the scale is green, go. Yellow, just be careful. Red is no, stop. And she's like, green, like here, we, like just. So I was probably very boring to her. And frankly, probably not doing my job. And so eventually we switch, but he doesn't want us to inverse. So we find a new partner. Now I lay down, and the woman I'm with is, let's say, 54 years old. And she's a pro, too, because she skips all the stuff that I do and immediately is going in deep and, like, doing stuff. And I'm like, all right. And she's not being aggressive. She's just being intentional. And I still feel like a kid because I'm laying there not knowing what we're going to discover here. And at one point, she grabs my neck. Starts to squeeze. I'm like, okay. And then she squeezes harder. And I'm like, I'll let you know, you know. And she lets go. She looks at me. And she goes, Paul, I need you to find your no. And I'm like, well, I'm not going to let you kill me. <laughs> she goes, no, no, no. That is not the point. The point is not to see what you can tolerate. The point is to see what is enjoyable to you. I had never thought of that in my entire life. And I'm not talking sexually, like as a human being, I had never considered the fact that life is not meant to be endured. Life is meant to be enjoyed. We are allowed to do things that feel good that give us pleasure and excitement and joy and playfulness and fun. And one could argue that's what we're meant to be doing. Because when you do what feels good, you come alive. And isn't that the point? 
And so we tried again. She grabbed my neck. And as soon as she squeezed, I said, red. Now, I'd like to say that that changed my life immediately. <laughs> Obviously, it didn't help me that evening. But in reflection, I realized that boundaries are not only helpful, they're not only valuable, but they're necessary. Because when you have boundaries, it allows you to really sit into and enjoy and feel experiences that you have within them. And I'd spent so much of my life just accepting what is, muscling through, making it work. But I wasn't seeking out the things that made me happy. And now, two years later, I've gotten better. I don't just give my time away. And I'm smart about how I use my energy. So I have gotten better. But here's the kicker. Two years later, and I still have not been to a sex party. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is that thing keeping me from doing the thing that I know and have known for years that I want to do? That fear, that friction that I was trying to escape in a pile of oily bodies, that's not out there, that's in here. That decision and that doing, there's a fine line. And it's just an invisible wall. It's just a boundary of our own creation. And while boundaries can be helpful in teaching us how and when to say no, I'm really hoping that it's time to finally fucking say yes. Thank you.